ferry that runs between Fortune, Newfoundland, and St. Pierre is a massive enclosed speedboat. Rough weather and choppy water ruled on the day I made my first ever visit to St. Pierre. I felt more like we were bouncing along on top of the water rather than moving in it. The sky was relentlessly gray during the boat ride and the sea as well. Weather and spirits improved as we disembarked at St. Pierre Harbor. St. Pierre and Miquelon are French islands only 20 kilometers off Newfoundland's Buren Peninsula. Although I've always been curious about the tiny piece of France, uh, territorial overseas collectivity of France to be exact, I'm embarrassed to say I'd never set foot on any part of St. Pierre and Miquelon before. Ville de Saint-Pierre, town of Saint-Pierre, has the look and feel of a rural French town that was pulled out of French soil and transplanted into Newfoundland's landscape. Residences, shops, hotels, office and other buildings are clustered near the harbor, divided by narrow paved streets. A person could be fooled into thinking he or she was in France. The only giveaway is that if you're facing inland, occasionally, you can see a rocky outcrop on the horizon that tells you the landscape is not French. It's Newfoundland landscape, wild, rugged, and beautiful. And this is yeah. Le Caillou Blanc. Some saint pierre provide guided tours in the warmer months. For less than 20 euros, you can go from one end of the island to the other and learn firsthand about St. Pierre's sights and history. Our tour guide took us to the western edge of St. Pierre to view the coastline and Etang de Savoyard, a lake at the very edge of the island. We also saw some new housing and meadows with some very fine looking horses. I discovered many interesting boutique shops in Saint-Pierre and most displayed a level of sophistication in products, decor and service rarely found in a rural setting. There were shops that sold French clothing and footwear, table and kitchenware, jewelry, perfume and gourmet canned goods like foie gras, mousse de foie, pâté de foie mushrooms and cornichons, soups and sauces, delectable French chocolates, simply irresistible. French wine is plentiful and available. I saw many kinds that are rarely seen in Canada, if at all. But hey, when you visit Saint-Pierre and Miquelon, you are in France. The bread and pastry shops not only looked great, they smelled great too. It was hard to resist some of the amazing pastries made fresh daily by St. Pierre's incredible bakers. If touring on wheels is not your thing, St. Pierre is a great place for walking, strolling in one of North America's most picturesque locations, breathing its cleanest air is not a bad way to pass some time. You might even strike up a conversation with one of the locals. English is spoken by many. Details of St. Pierre's culture and history are everywhere. A formal telling of it could be found here at L'Arche Museum. L'Arche even contains a guillotine. Walk a little further and you'll see the Franco Forum, a facility specializing in the teaching of the French language. It's here where groups of Memorial University students come for months of French immersion. When you've managed to work up an appetite, stop into one of St. Pierre's cafes. Service is delivered with a smile, and menus always have a few lunchtime options. I had my eye on this quiche, and believe me, it did not disappoint. Here's a fine-looking French baguette sandwich. Imagine washing this down with an excellent glass of French wine. After lunch, I sought out St. Pierre's most famous building, St. Pierre is predominantly Catholic. A large church was required to serve the population. 
St. Pierre Cathedral was rebuilt in the Basque style between 1905 and 1907. I was happy the church doors were open so I could view the sanctuary and its beautiful stained glass windows. There are many. In 1967, during an official visit, French President Charles de Gaulle gave St. Pierre Cathedral its collection of modern stained glass windows. Not far from the cathedral and harbor, on a slight hill surrounded by more narrow streets, is St. Pierre's Petanque Square. It's here, on most fine evenings, you'll find many citizens enjoying a game of petanque, an ancient sport and fun to watch. Walking back toward the harbor, exploring still more streets, the aroma of cooking food may lead you to one of St. Pierre's very good restaurants. A little more French wine and French gastronomy. How about freshly grilled foie gras with toast? Salmon mousse. Local lobster salad some pasta, lamb's kidney braised with mushrooms, and to finish, chocolate mousse, of course. You'll certainly walk back to your auberge or hotel feeling contented and satisfied at the end of your day. I spent 48 hours in St. Pierre and contrary to what people told me about two days being long enough to spend there, I would have happily stayed longer. There is much more that meets the eye to this little piece of France nestled against Newfoundland. I hope one day to return so I can get to know the place and its friendly people a little better.